Hi friends, um, as I have mentioned in the last video about the book Fear Not Failures, I am just uh, reading the first chapter in this video. Uh, the name of the chapter is Failure is a Step Towards Success. Okay. Had the scientists for swarm research in the face of failure, we would not have had telephone, TV, or transformer. Initial failure leads to eventual success, says an adage. Verily, failures are stepping stones to success. If the above is the voice of Kannada poet uh, K.C. Shivappa, Michael Jordan, a celebrity, has this to say, I have failed over and over again in my life and that is why I have succeeded. What a sentence, isn't it? For those who tremble to hear the very word failure and become despondent, the above lines of the Canada poet and the active assertion of Michael Jordan is an energizer. With a recharged battery, they can address themselves to the task on hand and win success and applause. After all, every failure or defeat is, in the final analysis, a beneficial experience in life. Those who regard failure as a terrible blow are guilty of committing a grievous error. For failure is nothing unnatural. Instead of being disheartened or depressed by failure, one should face it boldly as if it is a natural everyday occurrence. Then automatically fear is replaced by courage. By and large, the cause of many of our failure is lack of self-confidence. Sometimes even before any failure occurs, we are overwhelmed by depression. But he who has a sense of courage and self-confidence is not overpowered by failures. That is why it is said that even fate deserts him who lacks courage and confidence. But there is also a psychological element in what we regard as failures. When we are unable to achieve what we fondly desire, we feel frustrated and we call that our failure. Ironically, even those who have no goal or objectives in life suffer from this disease of failure. Yet they continue to live. They fail to realize that they are the architects of their frustration. If one were to realize that he is the architect of his own depression, then he would gird up his lions and put in sincere efforts to attain whatever objective he has. If he fails to achieve his intended goal, even after putting in sincere efforts, then he could term it a failure in life. Uh, instead of calling it their destined fate, such people should overcome such failures with a start heart and persevere. With renewed courage and confidence, such people do attain the intended objective. Here are a few opinions of some famous persons regarding failure. Amitabh Bachchan. Failure does not mean you have learned nothing in life, nor does it mean that you have attained nothing. It means that you have learned something, but to scale greater heights, you need to learn more. Newton. Failure doesn't mean that you are lazy. It indicates that you are not perfect that by putting in more effort, you can certainly attain your objective. Saurav Ganguly, failure does not signify that you are inferior or that you are of a lower caliber. It indicates that you have to change your strategy, make a new plan and abide by the plan. Thomas Alva Edison, failure does not mean that you lack competence. It only means that you need more time to achieve the end. Tan Nurki. Failure doesn't mean that you should leave your intended task half done or that you should abandon your intended objective. It means to succeed, one has to put in rigorous and consistent effort. Emperor Ashoka. Failure 
does not mean that you have brought ruin on yourself. It is a sign to begin a life afresh. Why do failures occur? Failures may occur at a personal level or at a professional level. They may occur on account of either our own mistakes or those of others. It may also happen owing to a third person's intervention. Generally, defeats are caused by our lack of self-confidence or overconfidence or by over-dependence or over-trust on others. Instead of fighting with presumption of failure, putting up a positive fight and not giving up till the last minute, then that failure becomes tolerable. There will be a self-satisfaction that we fail after a hard fight. This also helps us fight back with better planning and a stronger frame of mind. Moreover, the analysis of this failure prepares us for future battles. The word failure has no meaning. It is only an end result. There are people who look forward to happy results without putting in any effort. But such people do not get desired results. They have to change their very mindset. With the changed mindset, if one pursues, then one shall yield results accordingly. First of all, they should understand what their goals or objectives are. In order to gain that goal, they should chuck out a practical plan. They should visualize that impediments may occur and how to overcome them. Good vision, proper planning and imaginative effort will certainly, will certainly yield the desired result. An honorable failure is an incentive to eventual success. It provides investment and enables resolute effort. Armed with those two powerful weapons, one can march boldly and courageously to attain the goal. Though we speak of honorable failures, we cannot speak of instant success. For real success requires odd effort. Shakespeare has rightly said that too light a winning makes the prize light. So we should rather welcome diligent effort instead of shunning it. How do you feel? Do comment in between. Quoting the Kannada poet K.C. Shivappa, often failure turns into success, pleasure into pain, dream not that jaya pajaya pajaya will always be of the same hue. Learn to smile at success and not be depressed by defeat. Be it bitter or sore, learn to bear both. The wise and the learned say that failure should be deemed as pillars of support of future efforts. In other words, failures are stepping stones to success. If this perception is underlined, then fear or depression will automatically disappear and fresh energy is pumped in. Some people regard failure and success as the two sides of the same coin. In the other words, it means that unless there is failure, one cannot properly understand or evaluate the worth and greatness of success. Okay. You all know that Wright brothers flew their airplane for 12 seconds in December 1903, thereby proving that man could make airplanes fly, fly successfully. But how many of you know that their 1903 success was preceded by a thousand failures? We could extend this precept to literature also. If sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thoughts, then there would be a thousand pains behind those thoughts. A very rose bare thorns. Experience is a good teacher. In the university of life, such uncompromising teachers like the pain and failure shape our personality. It has been said that we learn many good lessons in life 
through defeats rather than through successes. So it is better to view defeats through a positive angle. The fear of failure is the primary enemy of success. If you conquer that lurking fear and uh, substitute it with courage and confidence, we would be able to cultivate an inner strength. That strength would enable us to face any difficulty or obstacle and gain success. It is only through a thousand merciless strokes that a sculptor transforms a rugged rock into a valuable statue. So always welcome such strokes in life. Failures enhance our bitter experiences and those experiences generate wisdom. Life is a bowl which contains both Bevu Bella. Just as a day is composed by the bright day time and the dark night time, the darkness of the night should yield place to the light of the day. In the same way, bitter experience paves way to sweeter ones. Life is also compared to a swing which sways from one end to another. We swing from failure to success. Failures should be regarded as good experiences which contain a lesson that one has to learn. An ordinary man learns from his own mistakes while a wise man learns from others' mistakes. Among us, there are a host of people who make a mountain of their failures and go on mourning over them, blaming God or destiny for their failures. This is not right. Uh, we should learn from such experiences and should cease to it that such failures do not occur, do not recur. An experienced old man says that we should accept failures smilingly and learn to correct ourselves. Experience is simply the name we give our mistakes, Oscar Wilde. When we take up a new plan for execution, we should make a thorough study of why others have failed to execute it and exercise enough care not to commit the mistakes which they had done. It is true that to err is human. It is also true that forgive and correct is divine. A celebrated Kannada poet, S. V. Parameshwara Bhatta, puts it crisply when he says, I am not a good human being if I do not commit a mistake. You are not God if you don't forgive me. An English philosopher's dictum runs as follows. Difficulties arise to stimulate, not to discourage. Let the difficulties know that you are difficult. The highly revered philosopher, compoet D.V. Gundapaya said, Grieve not when difficulties assail you. You have to bear your own cross. If the cross is heavy and large, broaden your shoulders. Let the destiny bear what is its share. The rest is meant to educate yourself. This is a solemn agreement between you and God. A poet furnishes another simile. A life is like a piano. If the white keys stand for happiness and pleasure, the black keys stand for pain and sorrow. If a melody is tuned what to emanate from the instrument, both the keys have to play their part. Both kinds of notes have to mingle the rising and the falling intonations to make a pleasing raga, a melody. Kesi Shivapa, whom we have quoted earlier, provides one more inspiring stanza. Hurdles do not have a long life. To bear them in the present may be worrisome, but the result they yield in future is wholesome. Fear not, worry not, and take them in your stride. That makes life awesome. Muddurama. It has been said that one of the greatest obstacles to sustained effort is the fear of death. This fear starts assailing us in midlife. Since death is the inevitable end. Bold and optimistic people do not allow themselves to be cold by that fear. They transform the 
inevitability of death into an incentive to put in quick and resolute efforts to achieve their goal. Cowards die many times before the death. The valiant never taste the death but once, said Shakespeare. Not yielding to cowardice but facing life valiantly is the real way to success. Another great writer has said, strength is when you go through hardships and decide not to surrender. Your failures do not define you. So that's the first chapter of Fear Not, Failures. So do watch the next video on victory after defeat, the second chapter. Okay? Till then, bye-bye.